Hey everyone, welcome to another video on my channel. In today's video, I will be demonstrating how to import data from an Excel file to SQL Server. Let's get started. I will be using this vehicle DB database. It has only one table right now, that is items. Currently, the items table is empty. Now, let me show you the Excel file. The Excel file contains four sheets. The items sheet has two columns, ID and item name, with a total of 10 records. The services sheet also has two columns, ID and service name, containing 12 records. The vehicle list one sheet has 12 columns and 30 records. The vehicle list two sheet has 13 columns and 20 records. There is an additional city column in this sheet that is not present in vehicle list 1. For the items sheet, I already have a table created in the database that I showed you. Now let's switch to SQL Server Management Studio. Right click on the database where you want to import the data. Click on Tasks. Select Import Data. The Import and Export wizard will open. Click next to proceed. Next choose Microsoft Excel as data source. Browse the Excel file. Select the version of the Excel file. If your Excel file contains a header row, make sure to keep this option checked. Click the next button to continue. If you encounter an error at this stage, Stating that the Microsoft OLEDB provider is not registered on the local machine, click on the link provided on the screen. The video link contains instructions that will guide you to resolve the issue. I have also shared the link in the video description. Now let's get back to the video. Choose the destination where you want to import the data. Select Microsoft OLEDB provider for SQL Server. Choose the server where your database is located. Mine is located on local machine, so I will write localhost. I will be using Windows authentication to connect with the server. Next, select the database. Click the next button. Keep the first option selected and press the next button again. Now here is the list of Excel sheets. We need to import from all sheets, so check all the sheets. I don't know why but the checkbox control is very small and is not visible. Let me zoom in so it is visible to you. Ok, all sheets are selected. Now you can see the suggested table names in the right column. If we continue with this setting, four tables will be created, each containing data from each sheet. However, we don't want that. We already have an item table in the database. So we don't want to create a new table for this. Additionally, we need to consolidate data from vehicle list 1 and vehicle list 2 into the same table. Now choose the destination table for the item sheet. For the services sheet, a new table will be created. Let's rename it to services. Next for vehicle list 1, rename the destination table to vehicles. Copy this table name and paste it for vehicle list 2 as we want data from both sheets in the same table. So data from items sheet will go in the items table that is already present in the database. Data from services sheet will go in the services table and this table will be created during import process. Data in vehicle list 1 and 2 will go to vehicles table. Now select the items table and press the edit mapping button. In the mapping window, we will map the source column of Excel file to the destination column of table in SQL Server. Since this item table was present in the database, we need to map the source column to the destination column. You will see that the ID column is present in both Excel file and database, so it is automatically mapped. The item name column is not present in the database table, so it will be ignored and the data will not be imported. To include its data, 
select the target column from the drop down. Once the mapping for the items table is done, press the OK button. Next is services sheet. Since the table for services is not present in the database, SQL Server will create a new table for this. Press edit mapping button. In this window, you can change the column types if needed. Let's change the ID column to int. Additionally, you can rename the destination column names if desired. Once you have made the necessary changes, press the OK button. Now open the mapping for vehicle list 1. Change the data type of ID column to int. Also change the data type for year column. Press OK. Next open the mapping for vehicle list 2. Again change the data type of the ID column to int and data type of the year column to int. Press OK. Now press Next. A warning will be displayed indicating that you cannot import multiple sheets into the same destination table. To resolve this, you can either merge both sheets before importing the data or import them one by one. Let's uncheck vehicle list 2 for now. We will import it later. Press next. Press the next button. Select run immediately. Press next again. Now press the finish button. Import process started. Ok, 10 rows from items sheet have been successfully imported, 12 rows from services sheet and 30 rows from vehicle list 1. Press close. Refresh the tables. The tables are now created. Let's check the data in the tables. Items Services Vehicles The data looks perfect. Now let's import the remaining sheet into the vehicle table. Again right click on the database, click tasks and select import data. Choose the source as excel, browse the file, choose the version and press next. Choose destination Microsoft OLEDB provider for SQL server and press next again. Select the vehicle list 2 sheet. Now select the destination table from the list, which is vehicles. Click on edit mapping. You have two options here. To append this data to the existing table data or delete the existing data and insert this one. We will go with append the data. Below is the mapping. It has mapped all the columns except city which is not present in the vehicles table. If you want to import data of city column, then you need to cancel the import wizard and first create the column. And after the column is created, then start the import wizard again. Ok, now we will continue without city column. Press OK button. Press next. Press next. Press next one more time. Press the finish button. Ok, 20 rows are successfully imported. Run the query again. Now we have 50 records in the table. I hope you found the video helpful. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up. Also hit the bell icon so you don't miss any future videos. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video.